some big bulls in here. Because with this many guys, the camera's up, and there's no doubt there's big elk here. <laughs> now this one says it has 645 videos on it. There's gotta be some big elk use in this area here because there's quite a few trail cameras around here, so. I'm Steve Chapel, and welcome to Elk Camp. I had never talked to Mark Long before until he drew this Unit 9 elk tag, and I tell you what, he was on the ball when he drew the tag. You know, I didn't really know what to expect, but when I got to camp and met him for the first time, I was pleasantly surprised. He was young, and he'd been practicing a lot with his bow. You could tell he was all about his equipment, and I just knew and was very confident that we were gonna have a great hunt together. You can't talk about elk hunting without somebody bringing up Steve Chapel. There were three people in our group that all drew, you know, the same tag. We all applied together, and we discussed a lot of different guides. And his style of hunting and his expertise was really what drew us to contact him. So the evening of day two was very eventful. We parked the ranger and we hadn't been off the ranger for more than a minute and we heard a bull bugle to the south of us in the Ponderosa Pine Country and it sounded like a really good bugle. So we started working our way down toward him. We were able to do what I call infiltrate the herd, and I broke out the threat bugle and started bugling at him. And he was a big enough, aggressive enough bull that he came over and took a look at us. At one point, Mark had him at full draw at 46 yards and just didn't quite have a shot. Real beautiful bull, he had a flyer off his fifth on one side. That was an encounter that both of us will never forget. A great evening. That's outstanding. He's big. How far did you have him? And he was at about 46 yards, but he would have come through the opening, and he was real interested in you. Just uh, couldn't tell what was going on. I saw you draw, I think, twice. Yeah. I held him as long as I could. He just wouldn't come forward the first step. Oh, man. Tearing up the ground out here. He didn't like you chuckling. Bull. Oh yeah, absolutely. Gonna wow you when it walks. Yep. Okay. On day three in the evening, we almost had a carbon copy of how day two was. We heard a bugle right away, and so we got the wind right, moved up on the bull. I initially tried to cow call to him, and he bugled back to it one time, and then just got real quiet. He was the only bull bugling, so we spent the whole evening chasing him around, and then at one point we were able to get up on the same hillside with him. And as we were moving in, luckily I had the Montana decoy out, and here stands a cow about 50 yards away from us, just staring at me. I had my mouth diaphragm ready, blew an aggressive bugle because I knew that bull was gonna be right there, and sure enough. He screamed and came walking right up and bugled up right in our face and walked up to about 20 yards and Mark got to full draw at the perfect time, and we had that bull dead to rights. A big, mature five by six, uh, definitely not a young bull, but just wasn't quite what we were looking for as far as antler size. But I tell you, it was a very intense encounter, and we came off the mountain with smiles after that. That would have been it. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Bergara Rifles. Our barrels make all the difference.
Increase your elk hunting success. Sign up for the University of Elk Hunting online course at elk101.com today. So on day four, we went back to our honey hole and we were just greeted with a chorus of bugles that morning. It was a welcome change. I would say there were probably seven or eight bulls bugling within earshot. It made it a little difficult to decide which one to go after first, so we just picked the one that sounded the best and was, you know, good for the wind for us, and we made our way down to him. was able to spot him in the binoculars so uh, I told Mark to get set up and I got back behind a little ways and uh, started cow calling to him and I mean he just he just ripped our heads off bugling. Out within view of us we could see that he had both main beams broken off above his thirds so he was definitely a, a mean bull who had been fighting walked right by mark mark had perfect opportunity to shoot him but he didn't have the antlers <laughs> that we wanted he wrapped around behind me trying to find that cow that was calling to him He just ended up leaving bugling on his way out. So um, that was a very intense encounter with a, a real ruddy bull that morning. That's what's going to keep happening right there. I want to add a few shots of him. Yeah. It's going to get even better than that. So that was great. Yeah. That's, that's how they're supposed to act when they're by themselves. It's that way. We finally got one by themselves without cows, and he just, I mean, just tore our heads off, so. That's <laughs> it. We kind of followed him, thinking that he would create some action, and sure enough, he did. As he went up bugling, some cows got with him. I started cow calling real aggressively and high-pitched. had probably a 325, 330 bull come in from the left. Another small six point came straight up at us. Uh, they were kind of both there at the same time. Kind of caught us on our feet. We weren't real prepared for that because they came in quiet because of that mean bugling bull. So we had to keep hunting. As often can happen sometimes when you have real hot rutting activity in an area, the following day can be completely different and that's exactly what happened. So had to go to my plan B and uh, we drove back up on top of the rim, um, you know, tried to hurry to get around and take advantage of the prime time still and did a location bugle and sure enough a bull answered pretty aggressively, probably three or four hundred yards away. We started making our way down toward him. It was open pine, so it was kind of tough archery country. I got out the Montana decoy so we could use that for cover. And at one point, we could see him across the meadow from us. He was probably two, 250 yards at that point. Got Mark and Raymond set up, and I got back behind and slightly off to the right. I tried the cow calling. He didn't respond well to it. I bugled at him aggressively, and he just answered back right away. mature five by six, but again, just not what we were looking for in the antler department with this unit nine tag, but nonetheless, another quality encounter on the hunt.
it's supposed to work. This week's tip is going to be making the lip ball bugle, or the display bugle as some people call it. For this tip I'm going to be using my red closer diaphragm and the Bully Bull Grunt Tube by Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. To make this sound, you're blowing the call as if you were bugling but you're sputtering your lips on the diaphragm. Without the tube it's going to look like this. <coughs> then you add the tube for amplification and volume and you get this sound. And that is a sound that's made by mature dominant bulls. It's going to get a reaction out of those bulls out there in the woods. You can pick this call up on my website, chapelguideservice.com, or at your local sporting goods dealer. Good luck on your hunts. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Steve Chapel's Zero Hunt Fees. Experience Arizona elk hunting with zero hunt fees. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Steve Chapel's signature line of Rocky Mountain hunting calls. On day seven, I went to a completely different area that we hadn't been to yet out in the pinion juniper country. I knew it was fairly broken country, but still had enough cover for good archery hunting. Yeah, why don't you guys go ahead and get up in front up there where you can see that kind of broken meadow pretty good, and I'll stay back here and see how this bull reacts. If he doesn't jump all over and come in quick, we'll just pick up and move. There was a bull bugling off probably 300 yards away, and I had to work him pretty hard. It kind of got to the point where I thought this bull might steal all of our prime time away, but finally he showed up and he actually was pushing a cow out in front of him. We were able to see the bull. Uh, you know, he was a decent bull, but still, again, not, not what Mark was looking to fill his tag with. On the 22nd of September, day eight, again, I went out to a spot that we hadn't been to yet, hiked in about a mile. All at once, I heard a bull with a real high-pitched fluty bugle, just a beautiful, unique bugle. Mark had a good setup there in the shade, blew a few cow calls, and that bull just came storming in, bugling at us, walking head on. Don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. Don't shoot him, Mark. Don't shoot him. Nice job. Thought it was a decision I might live to regret, but in the moment I thought it was the right one. A great, great, beautiful ponderosa pine bull and eventful encounter. Cool bugle. Do you hear that flutey sound and bugle he had? He came from nowhere, just all of a sudden. I think he only bugled once, way far away. Yeah. I'd say a 320 bull with his width, he was real wide. He looked wide coming yeah. in, and then he turns and he just doesn't quite have what we're Point looking length. for. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Bergara Rifles. Our barrels make all the difference. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Steve Chappell's Zero Hunt Fees. Experience Arizona elk hunting with zero hunt fees.
The evening of day nine, we had given our honey hole spot a pretty good rest, probably about three days. So we drove back to it, hiked in about half to three quarters of a mile away. Nothing was bugling, so I threw out a bugle. Finally got a response. Got set up, not knowing how eventful this setup was gonna be. Four bulls ended up coming into that one setup. Some of the bulls like the cow call. A couple of the bulls like the bugle. One was a really big five by six, came right up, bugled like three times right in our face. Very hard to pass some of these bulls, but with a special tag, Mark has, even though we were getting down deep into the hunt, we'd made the tough decision to pass on all four of those bulls. But what an amazing evening it was. Four bulls into one setup. It's that, it's that estrus excited orange reed. So on day 10, we were in the bottom of the ninth inning, so to speak. It was the last day of Mark's hunt, and we knew that the chips were down, and I'd had him passing a lot of bulls along the way, so I knew the pressure was on me to get him a bull at that point. We went out to a new area that I'd gotten a good report on from my cousins, and sure enough, there were two or three bulls bugling there at first light. Well, I kind of decided with it being day 10 and our last morning of the hunt that I just needed to make something happen. So I had heard another bull bugling off to the east of us and we just started walking down the hill toward him in the cedar pinion country. I called a little along the way. He was having nothing to do with it, wouldn't answer back. Finally, I got to within what I would say is 75 yards of him. So I blew a bugle. He immediately fired back, and then he started just tearing a tree up. So I just kept the heat on him. And just by keeping the pressure on him, he ended up walking right up to us. Mark came to full draw right before he walked out into an opening. The bull walked behind a bush, and apparently because he had heard me bugle from that location, he was just so curious to come find me. And that was the moment of truth of that hunt. afternoon uh, we got our spot marked on the GPS where we shot from and we're gonna get down there and lay some hands on it brother. Outstanding. Thanks Steve. You bet. Let's go find it. <laughs> Good hey, job. Hey, you guys are trying to tell me where he's at. We don't have to whisper anymore hey, on this hunt buddy. <laughs> Man, 
Oh, Congratulations again. What Way an to execute, Mark. Amazing journey with you over these last 10 days. Just oh. let you touch it. <laughs> Let's get our hands on him, huh? <laughs> Outstanding. Oh, look at that guy. <laughs> nice heavy bull, man. Holy smokes. All right, Mark. Well, I can't say enough about how fun it's been to hunt with you. Man, it's been an eventful 10 days, hasn't it? Outstanding. Gosh. I'm glad it ended like this. This is, it was a great shot, 100 yards, easy recovery. Yeah. Amazing animal. Everything I wanted in a trophy for Unit 9. To see the animals come in that close and to, you know, smell them and lock eyes with them. And in some mornings you could see their breath and the, you know, their saliva dripping from their mouth if they were worked up. Um, it was pretty intense. I've never been around elk like that before. For any of you out there who like what you see on this Arizona hunt and would love to have a hunt like this with bugle and bulls coming into the call, I've got a program called Zero Hunt Fees where you can pay a small amount yearly and when you draw that Arizona elk tag, you can come hunt with us and have no more due for your hunt. And it's just a phenomenal program that makes a guided elk hunt in the financial reach of just anyone who would like to come out and experience a dream hunt in Arizona. So check out my Zero Hunt Fees program. That uh, wraps up this week's episode of Elk Camp, and we're gonna look forward to our next hunt, and we're already preparing for our muzzleloader hunter who's gonna be rolling in in a couple of days.